Hey viewers, my name is Kara. I'm your Tuesday host here on The Pagan Perspective. We're back inside in front of my cluttered table. Welcome. I, uh, every day lately, since it's getting warmer out, it's approaching summertime. Every time I get ready to do a video in the middle of the day or like early afternoon when there's good lighting, like natural lighting, oh, um, inevitably someone starts mowing their lawn. <laughs> and I just like, I don't understand how it happens so frequently. <laughs> Tuesday must be lawn cutting day here. I don't understand. But anyway, I'm in here to be a little bit further removed from the noise. So this week we are talking about path inspiration, uh, specifically people and figures from mythology, folklore, things like that who inspire us or who we look up to or who we consider role models. The actual text will be in the description of my video as always. The questions come from two different people. The first one, or the first one that I listed, obviously we can answer them in any order uh, we want, and I did get a chance to watch all of the subs videos from subs week in March where they all answered these questions as well. So you will have the opportunity, if you haven't already, to go back and watch all of those. And then after this week, you will have the opportunity to have heard the answers to the, these questions from everyone who is currently a member of the team, which I think is cool. So I just thought this was a cool topic that would do well for all of us. I'm gonna try to do that a little more often and give us some of the same topics, but a little bit spread out. So the subs did it in March. We're doing it now in June. The first part that I have listed comes from Freedom Fighter who asked which pagan, which druid figures from folklore, mythology, or historical record, not modern, inspire you and your path and why? What did they teach you? What can you learn from their life? What do they represent? Why are they depicted in such a way? And what makes them great? In other words, why do you like them? Why are you inspired by them? And then the other part of the question came from one of our team members from Yucca, who again, this is one of the suggestions that Yucca had given like a year and a half ago when I asked people for a bunch of topics. And so Yucca's just full of so many good ideas. Thank you, Yucca. So this is one of those, again, pulling from them. In this case, because it went along so well with this other one that was submitted by a viewer. So I just wanted to put them together. And Yucca had said, pagan role models. Do you have any? Who are they? And what about them do you admire? So I figure because the first person, our viewer, was asking about um, mythological, folkloric, or historical figures that Yucca's question could kind of open that door for us to talk about more modern or contemporary inspirations as well. So this is also a difficult one for me to answer. Um, that partly why I made sure to watch all of the subs videos today before doing this, because I was just like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> This is something that, like, my brain doesn't work in the same way as other, as other people's. That's kind of a silly thing to say because that's true of everybody. <laughs> um, what I mean is when it comes to thing like this, things like this, when it comes to role models, and when I think of, like, who are my role models, I don't think I have any. When you ask me, who do I look up to? There are very few people that come to mind or figures that come to mind because those terms, role models or looking up to, those mean very specific things in my head. When you ask who inspires me or where do I find inspiration, that opens things up a lot more. So I kind of want to talk about that for a second and then maybe attempt to talk about some individual people. But this is really difficult for me. I have never been one of those people that gets really into any like figure like kids in school that I knew would be like really obsessed with a certain band or a certain singer right there are a lot of musicians and bands and singers that I love I love their music and I really enjoy it but I never like looked up to them, I never considered them role models, you know, things like that. So it's just, it's not really the way my brain works. When I think of looking up to someone, the way that I think that does apply to my life currently 
is when I think of looking up to, I think of it as being someone who is more advanced than I am in a given area. It doesn't mean that they as a person are, I think that they're better than me as a person, but it might be like, depending on what I'm learning or what I'm interested in at the time, I look up to the people who are kind of a step above me on the path or a step ahead of me on the path. You know, it might not be up, it might be going deeper, it might be, you know, level, um, but somebody who is a little bit advanced compared to me uh, in the given field, whatever that is. So if I'm talking about like, I don't know, something like tarot, then if I had had any formal teachers, I might be looking up to them, or I might look up to people who are very influential in the way that we understand tarot today or in divination in general. When we think about witchcraft, the people that I look up to would be the people who I feel were a little more advanced than me at the given time or in the given subject. So when I was a beginner, I looked up to people who had been on the path for a while because that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to have more knowledge and experience. As a beginner, you're very excited and eager to learn things, so you look up to people who already have a little bit of that knowledge. And then as you move up and you become one of those people, you start to notice some people are looking up to you because there you are, you've gained that position that you were looking up to before when you were earlier on. So then you get to that middle point and there may be people looking up to you, but there are also still people that you look up to. There are people who are, again, still further along than you, who still know a little bit more than you, who maybe are a little more well-versed in a given form that you've become interested in. And it branches off from there, right? So you can follow your own personal path for a while and then you learn about something totally new to you. It's not new, but it's totally new to you that you get really excited about learning about. And so you find people, you'd like to veer off over here, um, and then your path kind of you know, follows you. You think you're heading a certain direction, but then you're like, oh wait, that shiny thing over there, I wanna learn about that. And you go over there, and so you seek out people who are already doing that thing. So that's the kind of relationship that I think of when I think of who I look up to. It's the people who are already doing something that I want to be able to do, the people who are already successful at something that I want to learn to be successful at, things like that. And so people that I look up to at this point in my life, I would say are mainly witchcraft and pagan like teachers, recognized teachers. Um, because that's something that I'm getting involved in more and more in my local community. So I, I, on my personal channel a little while back, I did a video about our sp spiritual ancestors who I consider spiritual ancestors or craft elders, um, people who I consider my spiritual ancestral lineage, the people who came before me that inspired where I am today as far as my path. So I don't really want to talk about that because I did a video about that and that's similar but not exactly the same thing here. But definitely people like that. Um, I would look up to people who made what I'm doing today possible, who paved the way, those pioneers and those activists who helped change the spiritual landscape and the, the social landscape really of like how people see us, how people accept us or don't accept us, um, but making certain avenues accessible to us that without them, we wouldn't be where we are now. You know, it's not saying that I agree with everything they ever said. It's not saying I look up to them like I don't you know, hang on their every word and think that everything they ever said or did is the best thing in the world and that I worship them. That's, that's not how it is for me. That's not how it is for most of us, right? We wouldn't really necessarily be on these paths uh, if that was the way we thought about things. That's not how we see the world. Um, but you know, I'm thinking of this as like how people think of preteens getting obsessed with their different singers or bands or actors or whatever, like almost a worshipful type of
feeling, a very high reverence. Um, I have a lot of respect for these people. And I think that giving them their due as far as recognizing what they've made it possible for us to do is very important. And I think it's important for us to always be progressing from there. So the people that I look up to at this point in my life, I'm like over explaining this. You know that's how I work by this point. Um, are people like my teachers within the reclaiming tradition. The people who are helping me learn more about a specific tradition that I have become enamored with and that I really feel at home in. And so I want to know everything about it and how it got here, where it came from, what influenced it, who is involved in it. Because at this point, they are more involved in a more formal way than I am. So the people that I look up to as far as reclaiming goes, I look up to my teachers for the purpose and like because of the fact that they are already trained teachers. And so they are the people helping me learn and progress to the point where I am in the process of becoming a trained teacher myself. And at that point, we will be more on the same level. But until I get there, I look up to them for that purpose because they are where I want to be. They are they have already done the things that I need to do and so I look up to them for inspiration as well. Um, and people of course like Starhawk, who is one of the original members of the Reclaiming Collective, which then evolved into the Reclaiming Tradition of Witchcraft. That is partly why I am reading all of Starhawk's books in the order that they were published because I want to know more about this tradition that I feel very at home with and that I really like. And so I am looking to those sources for knowledge and inspiration. So those are the types of things that I would say is what I look up to because of the way that I see that phrase inspirationally oh my gosh I mean I get inspiration from anywhere and everything and anything from nature to everybody here on the pagan perspective team you know and I wouldn't say that I look up to nature <laughs> and I also wouldn't say that I look up to my peers and my teammates here because we're a team we are all doing the thing. And so I gain inspiration from hearing about everyone's different individual ways of doing things and thinking about things. But it's not a look up to or consider people role models type of situation in my mind. So that's how I see those terms. And then as far as pagan, witchy, druid, etc. figures from folklore, mythology, or historical record who inspire me in my path and why, yeesh that's really difficult again because there's nothing like like I have friends who have a favorite character who just kind of like inspires them on a daily basis and like everything they do like they really look up to a certain character or figure from mythology folklore whatever I don't really have that and that's one of the areas where like a lot of the people around me in my life do have that and they do feel that way about things and I've always felt kind of like there's something wrong with me because I don't feel that way. And I'm coming to understand more in recent years that that's not really the case, that I just see things differently and that there are in fact things that I get super duper excited about and super duper passionate about the way that certain people do about their chosen thing, you know? So I'm starting to realize that like it just looks different for me, but I'm not actually... I'm not actually all that different um, from the way that I see these people, you know, really like nerding out about certain things, right? So I understand. Um, but I do see it somewhat differently. So there's nothing I can really think of that's like, oh yeah, this for sure. But there are a lot of characters and figures that have inspired uh, bits and pieces of kind of who I am today and how I see the world. My partner and I definitely would collectively name the Doctor of Doctor Who the Doctor. Um, 
rather than we've also been watching a lot of Star Trek. So Star Trek Voyager also has the doctor, um, the ship's doctor who doesn't have a particular name, at least not in this point. We haven't finished the series. So uh, I know there have been some flash forwards into the future where he tries to take on different names, but uh, he's just credited as the doctor. But and he inspires us too. But um, the doctor of Gallifrey of Doctor Who is definitely very inspiring. And there are a lot of quotes from the show that we bring up at different times that really inform the way we think about things. Sci-fi absolutely in general is inspirational for me in terms of like, especially understandings of like time travel and that time is not linear and like how that relates to my spiritual experiences and stuff like that. So you guys have heard me talk about that before, like different incarnations and different timelines and lifetimes and all this. So it's kind of like sci-fi mixed up in my spirituality. So that's definitely <laughs> inspirational to me. Um, as a sort of another side of that many-sided die um, that sci-fi is also part of is fantasy. Some people kind of squish them together as sci-fi slash fantasy. Um, but fantasy in the realm of like the not specifically science related parts. I find a lot of inspiration in fairy tales, folklore, things like that. Um, one of the decks that I read with is an oracle deck called the Fairy Ring. All of the cards are different fae beings, different characters, and I have always, it was the first deck I ever got when I was like 12 years old, and I still use it to this day. It's been through a lot. <laughs> it's been beaten up, had coffee spilled on it, like all kinds of crazy things, and it's still here, still surviving. Um, I love it because each card has its own story. Like they're each their own figure from folklore or mythology or what have you. And so I find inspiration in various of those stories. And at different times in my life, I think of different stories. I find inspiration in story kind of in general. So I can't think of any like mythology or historical record type figures that inspire me. I'm sure there are some, but I can't really think of any except like right now Aradia is on my mind because um there will be a ch there will be a video on my personal channel later this month about this, but I recently read Weave the Liminal by Laura Tempest Zakroff, who also edited the new book The New Aradia, a witch's handbook for magical resistance. I think that's the subtitle. But that and then I also had recently read Witchcraft Activism like last month and I did a video on my personal channel about that and that author also mentioned Aradia in that book. So Aradia is definitely a folkloric kind of mythological figure. Um, that's the only one that's really coming into my mind right now as far as like a mythological or historical figure, or folkloric figure, not a historical figure. <laughs> um, but other stories like the Wizard of Oz has always been very influential to me and all sorts of different spin-offs of it. I love how so many people have come up with different ways of telling that story and I love that process in general. So there's the original Wizard of Oz, there's Wicked, there's um, the sci-fi channel miniseries Tin Man. I recently brought that up on a stream with my partner and I was like, has anyone heard of Tin Man? And nobody had. But like when I discovered Tin Man back in high school, I was like, my mind was blown. It was amazing. And I, I wrote papers about the Wizard of Oz in college. Like, so that is definitely, and I played Dorothy in a stage production of the Wizard of Oz when I was in high school. That was my senior musical performance. That was my last high school performance. So the Wizard of Oz has always been kind of a current that has followed me through life and that I find inspiration in in various ways and sometimes it's from the original sometimes it's from the wicked adaptation sometimes it's from something from Tin Man sometimes it's from some other iteration of that tale but that's what I love about them I find inspiration in the original Harry Potter tales the same way you know and like you know things that we learn from them you know lessons like 
friendship and working together and believing in yourself and all these things that are <laughs> that kind of everybody talks about as being part of why those stories are inspirational. But they also just provide different ways of looking at magic to me and different depictions of witches and things like that, which I know that's a whole other thing that we always talk about is media representations and are they accurate and are they not and can we learn from them anyway? Yes, I believe we can learn from them anyway. We can pretty much learn from anything. It's just a matter of learning what we like or what we don't like or it's learning or seeing something that we want to be like or something that we don't want to be like so so you can learn something from everything it's just whether you learn yeah i really like that i want to be like that or maybe you learn from it i don't really like that i don't want to do that and so either way you're learning something and it's shaping the way that you go from there but yeah figures from folklore mythology yeah there are lots of figures that i have worked with from various mythology, various folk tales that I don't know if I could say there are certain ones that I really look up to, but it depends on the time in my life. It depends on what's going on in my life. Absolutely. Like the, the things, the characters, the stories that meant a lot to me as a child are different than the things that meant a lot to me as a teenager and are different from the things that meant a lot to me when I was in college and into my early 20s and then now in my late 20s. Like, it depends. So this is also kind of an aspect of like, even if I could name people right now, I don't necessarily think I would want to because a couple years from now, it might be totally different. And these videos are very much time capsules of what we're thinking at the given time anyway. But especially, um, I've definitely had like people in the past who I have kind of looked up to for various things, whether it be like, oh, I really want, you know, a relationship with deity like this person has, or I really want a practice like theirs or a relationship like theirs you know the relationship goals life goals you know whatever there have been people that I've looked up to in the past who then later turn out to be really horrible as role models you know and so that turn out to be really toxic or like that once they start talking about something I realize how I really don't like what they're saying and I really don't like what what they're teaching to other people. I don't personally agree with it. So, and there have been times where I look up to someone for a, a very specific thing, again, like looking up to someone who is just slightly advanced of where I am and they're where I wanna be in a given subject because they know more about something or they have more experience in whatever the thing is. And then I find out something else unrelated to that that's part of their life that I really, really disagree with. And so I think that's always kind of helped me mellow it and kind of temper that, um, that desire to ever treat anyone like, oh, like up on a pedestal, right? Because I've always seen like, I might look up to you for this one thing and like your technique in doing this one thing, but I definitely don't look up to you as an overall role model or like there's something about them as a person that I'm like, that's not really for me. Um, yeah, this is kind of goes along with <laughs> what we talked about before. We just did videos about um, comparing our paths to other people's and when does that become detrimental? And so I, I talked about that last week. So I won't get more into that. This video's pretty long as it is and I didn't think it would be this long because I didn't think I really would be able to say anything but yeah so for me it's always it depends on what I'm what I'm looking at at the time it depends on what I'm interested in at the time and then I seek out people who are more knowledgeable and more experienced about that thing that I want to learn about 
And then when I get to the point where I feel like maybe I am at the same level as them, one, I would find that a little bit strange because hopefully if someone is here and I am here and I am working to progress to be where they are, hopefully simultaneously they've also been continuing to work so that by the time I get here, they're even a little bit further ahead because we're always learning, right? So I think if I like became level with someone and still knowing that I have much more to learn and then maybe like I keep progressing and they just kind of stay here, they stop being a role model for me at that point because maybe I still get inspiration from them. Like I said, I get inspiration from everywhere and it doesn't have to be like a looking up to type of thing. It doesn't have to be a role model type of thing. But yeah, I've, I've had people that I've looked up to in the past who I cease looking up to after a certain point. So, let that be as it may. <laughs> it's really interesting to think about. And, um, yeah. Let us know your answers to this question in the comments or make your own video on the topic and tell us about it. I know I saw in the comments of the subs videos that someone has done these questions on their channel, so that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you next time. Is next week subs week or two weeks? Anyway, I'll see you the next time I see you on this channel and I'll see you on my personal channel as well. Until then, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.